Okay, guys, so I am going to bring up my notes here because I, I was thinking about this today. I hate these school shootings. I hate sh any shootings at all. They're, they're, they're always tragic. Some, you know, because there's people out there killing each other over usually stupid things that don't matter. And in this example, this is a young uh, boy who has now turned into a man because, well, not a man, but He's now forever changed. You can't shoot and kill people with and, and walk away from it unchanged. He's now forever changed. He is he's I don't know how else to put it. He's he's been grown up by it. And I am saddened by the death. I'm saddened by what happened to this guy. I I just don't even know what to what to say other than I'm praying for the whole situation. I am hoping that he can turn his life around. I am hoping for that. Mostly. And, uh, and I am sad. I, I am just, I don't even know where to go with it. But what, I, what I was thinking about is basically this. I want to do something about what's going on with our youth, and I think everyone does. You know, many people believe that gun control is what's going to solve it, and I'm not one of those people. Taking things away from people doesn't work. If they want to do something, they will find a way to do it. And even if you say, well, I mean, we've seen examples of it with terrorists. If they can't find a gun, they find a knife, and they kill a bunch of people that way. If they can't find a knife, they get a truck, and then they get a bomb, and they kill a bunch of people that way. It, it, it doesn't stop. The problem isn't weapons. The problem is people, always. The hearts and minds and conditions of people. And this, this is why gun control will never work. But what I always wonder in situations like this, when these things happen, is where was the church? Where was the people practicing true religion? You know, where is the body of Christ when practical orphans like this, like this kid was? It sounds like, thank you, Lucas, it sounds like these people, this boy was left alone. He had no one, no one, anyone, whenever I heard interviews about this kid, no one interacted with him. Everyone left him in a corner to, to not deal with him. They're saying, yes, he has mental issues. Okay. You know, okay. How about let's all get involved and, and help him before it gets here. I'm not saying, you know, now that, now that he's murdered people. You know, I have like, oh, well, so much sympathy for him. I have a sympathy for him, but he needs to go to jail too. Okay, I'm saying before these things happen, how can we stop these things from happening? This chi this guy was a practical orphan. It doesn't sound like he had any family. It doesn't sound like he had anything or anyone. And when you're left like that, we're not, we're not meant to be left like that. He was alone. No one was helping him. And that does create anger and things like that. So it makes me think, where was the, where is the body when practical orphans like this are abandoned to ideologies that teach them the acceptance they're missing through family ties comes only after the dealing of death. What happens? You know, where are, where is the church, you know, trying to help, you know, before we get here? I would say Christian mothers and caring mothers, Christian fathers and caring fathers, reach out to these children before they become men to the dealing of death. We look at people who are strange and different and quiet and say, well, I can't let him around my kids. What happens if thus and such, thus and such? Well, now we know what happens. You 
Christian, I'm speaking mainly and and to the church because that that's the only people I can really speak to really is you leave people to themselves you leave them ostracized you leave them to do this and this is what happens you're worried you know I understand parents are worried but what about my babies I can't let my kids get involved with somebody weird or strange what about your babies and your kids now? Because if they're not one of the fallen, then they've been, then now they've been affected by this. You now have an idea about how reaching out and doing the hard and maybe even dangerous work of loving the unloved as Jesus did changes the world. Not only for you, but for your children too, your babies, that you're so worried about this strange and quiet and upset person coming into your life, you can see the results of doing the opposite. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna I'm gonna answer you, mind liberty, in just a minute. I just wanna I wanna close with a couple of things. Okay, there's an episode of this television show named Fringe. And in Fringe you have two different, basically you have, let's say, I have America and then I have alternate America. Like that. You have an alternate reality where you could have made different choices and different things could have happened in your life. And there is a character in there and as a young man, a young boy I should say, he was abused and he became strange and he started you know killing animals and all these things all these indicators we have of you know all this stuff over on one side he was saved because a woman instead of whenever he did these weird things instead of beating him and ostracizing him and leaving him to himself to, because he was a freak and all this other stuff loved him instead said don't do this do this you know this is what love is, not this. Okay? On the other side, same guy, same situation that he had. Instead, he did not have that woman. And he became a serial killer. <laughs> I mean, and the thing that stopped the guy in this, this character, in this story, from becoming a serial killer on side A was the idea, the love of that woman. So he before any of this happened, before any of that happened, the love of that woman caused him to say, okay, I'm not going to do this. That interaction with, from her, all of those things caused him to do that. Caused him not to be. He became instead a professor. All right. This is a, an example in our own writing about what could be happening. All right. Arise, body of Christ, and do your work in the vineyard. It is time, Christians, for you to look around and open your eyes. There are practical reasons God tells us to do what he tells us to do. Now I'm just going to read James 1, 27, in case you think I'm just totally out there and you think that you know, well, you don't understand my situation, you don't know anything about me, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. God knows about you, though. And here's what he says in James 1.27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Many of these children who go off and they do these things are orphans, not because their parents are dead, but because they are neglected. They are practical orphans. We as the body are to look after orphans and widows in their distress. Think about that as a kid if you were left that way. You would be in distress. You would go to these places that these kids are going to who tell them go and kill because that's what a man does because that's how you're going to save the country and things like that. That's exactly what they would do. 
So think about that. Mothers, fathers, if you care about the world, if you care about your children or yourself, if you care, Christians, these strange children, these quiet children, these children who might need help, guess what? You're right there. And it's time to do something about it. Now, if you're still here, the person asked me the question, I can't remember. The shootings 